I couldn't resist it, so we're doing it again. We're building another steam engine. It's once again by Doll, so the original is an already existing model. It's a twin cylinder as you can see, but this time it's an overtype. I really like this idea and so I went to the CAD machine and did a few drawings once again. Um, rather than go into all the details of the construction and what I thought about this, um, this time I'm probably just going to jump straight into it. You may see that a few parts, like for example the cylinder oilers and the cross heads and, and whatnot, they stayed the same. That's just what uh, Doll did themselves. I mean, they're a company that had to be rational at some point. And so pieces like the water pump, the side glass, the overpressure valve and so on, they just remain the same. And so I am not going to go into as much detail on this build as I did with the Doll 362. So I can't guarantee that there will be an update as regularly on this one than I did for the 362. But still, I'm hoping to make this an interesting project and one that doesn't get boring to watch over time. Um, so um, yeah, rather than waffling about, let's just jump straight into it and start making parts. We're going to start by making parts which I can't do in my home shop, either because they require a milling machine or because they require larger machinery than I have, like for example the flywheels and the base plate for the engine itself. I have already done some preparing work inscribing lines onto a piece of tubing which we're going to use for this and um, we're going to use a dividing apparatus to do all the milling on it. Flywheels are done. I did a tiny amount of polishing and filing and uh, got most of the impurities out. It's still a little bit rough, but I think that will, you know, work with the cast look that these originally would have had and uh, I'm not going to go any further. Plus it'll get painted, so um, you won't see most of that anyways. Let us now take care of the base plate.
thanks to a very kind viewer, I've also got a new set of toys to play with. This is an adjustable tool holding device for the shaper. You can see a bunch of different shapes here. And basically all these interchangeable tips have a cylindrical portion here, which you can then insert into the hole here. Tighten down and, uh, well, you're pretty flexible with that. These guys here are high-speed steel and these here are carbide tipped. I think I'm going to push my luck here and uh, go for carbide and, uh, well, see how well it lasts. <laughs> First I'll make the trapezes which go below the main bearings. This is some pretty tough scraptonium, so I'm glad I chose carbide for that one. Next up is the cylinder bearing. The bearing blocks have a pretty fancy contour, so it's mostly handwork to get those into shape. Okay, the bearing blocks are in place and they line up pretty well with their bores, so this shaft will spin in here nicely. Now for the unimportant bits, which are going to make most of the work. You see, I had initially intended to give this thing some framing, if you want to call it that, a uh, sort of a lip which stands out around each contour. The original had that, it was of course cast, I can't do that. My intentions were to mill that out, but uh, my setup immediately proved not rigid enough to give a nice result. So, I made myself some extra plans here, and I'm going to make all these little doodads out of brass sheet metal, and then essentially build the frames and solder them into the contours and out on the perimeter. Okay, I've prepped all the little brass pieces here. 
I will now strip this down, so these heavy lumps of steel are away, anneal all this and bend the radii into them, file them to shape, solder them in place and I'll be back in about 10 hours from now. After three and a half hours of soldering and two tanks of gas, I can now proudly present to you the finished base plate. Looks like a piece of shit, but it has it where it counts. Now I can tidy this up just a little bit. I'm not going to do too much because it's going to get painted anyways, but uh, you know, just smoothen up where the scale has formed up a little bit. And uh, then we're ready to move on to the next step. I can either make the crankshaft next or the cylinders. Haven't decided yet, but you'll see that in the next part. Either way, it's going to mean soldering. In the meantime, see you guys and bye bye.